I always forget to do that. Hi. This is the last and event apart of 2010. I'm really sad. This has been a rocking year. I don't, I'll just say, oh, that's me on Twitter. Um, I'll just say that I was talking to a group of people at lunch, and I was trying to impart upon them the understanding that this, if you're a web professional, this is the best conference that you can attend. Are you guys feeling me on that? <laughs> also, what you guys need to know is that as a speaker, being on this stage with the other folks that appear on this stage is like career milestone up here. Seriously, the level of respect that I have for the folks that I've been sharing the stage with over the past year is high. I also want to point out to you guys that most of those people are sitting in the back of the room right now. This is the only conference I speak at where other speakers sit in the room to support each other through the whole thing. So thanks, you guys. You're awesome. <laughs> So another really great thing, most of us have been appearing together at, uh, at the same events throughout the year, and so we've kind of gotten to know each other, you know, speaker dinners, what goes, happens at the speaker dinner, stays at the speaker dinner. Uh, and one of the nice things, too, is that you begin to run into these people at other conferences throughout the country. And in fact, um, Luke Rubluski and I actually found ourselves at this Norwegian conference called Web Dogana. And that photo right there is those are the people that introduced Luke's talk. It was a clown trip. That just, this Norwegians. So anyway, Joshua Porter was also there, and Luke and Josh and I decided we're in Norway, we need to go fjording. And Luke's battle cryer for this was always fjords! So we decided we were going to do this. So I'm telling you this because when I, I just started speaking what, I don't know, two years ago, a year and a half ago, and I was always like fascinated by the speakers, like secret lives, like, you know, they present these professional images out in the world, what most of us do, and like what happened behind the scenes. So I just wanted to like give you guys just a quick glimpse of, of this trip that we did together in Norway. This was uh, the view from our cabins. I'm serious. This is not a joke. The jokes come later. This was a little photo that I took. I mean, it, yeah, spe like spectacular. Here's me and Luke and Josh getting rained on in Norway. And then there, this is a bowl of coffee. <laughs> and this was, we were, we were sitting in like this little coffee shop trying to figure out what to do. And we'd all kind of had our little snack. And I was like, I just need one more cup of coffee. And I went back and I came back with this bowl. And I had been really self-conscious being in Europe because I like, you know, was worried about being like a French fried finger American. And Luke was constantly giving me crap about like everything. And so this is just, I just want to give you guys this little like snippet of exchange that went down because this pretty much like sums up what goes on when we're not up here talking to you guys. This is a picture of mom's <laughs> bowl of coffee. <laughs> this is mom. Cracking up. Notice she's wearing a hat in a European restaurant. It's just like faux pas number one. This is why the kids, this is Josh <laughs> and me, the kids are really embarrassed about mom's <laughs> coffee bowl um, and hat. And look, she can't even speak, which is even more embarrassing. I think the hat just went into the coffee bowl. Yep, her rim, it you did? can see, was covered <gasps> in uh, did. Did covered in coffee. <laughs> Turn it off. So anyway, because you guys are the last crowd, I just wanted to share that with you, and also because I threatened Luke with it, and he was like, you're not really going to do that, are you? And I was just like, well, yes, I am. <laughs> All right, so thank you for humoring me. Now we're going to talk about your teeth. Is everybody done with the sugar that you just completed? Yeah, that's good. So teeth are something that are very important to us in life. We use them to smile. We use them to speak. We use them to chew. And part of what we need to do to take care of our teeth is to visit the dentist. Now, I myself have some issues with visiting the dentist. I often am a little uh, worked up and a little nervous, but that's cool. It's all right, because I'm willing to like, go in and do what needs to be done in order to take care of my teeth. So at some point, all of us as adults probably need to choose a dentist, right? Like some of us have dentists that we've been going to since we were kids, and that's fine. But at some point, you need to figure out who your next dentist is going to be. And this is a little bit of a touchy subject, right? Because you're going to have a pretty personal relationship with this person. This is somebody who's going to like have their hands in your mouth, right? So 
Typically, the first thing that we do when we need to seek out sort of health care or personal services is we go to our friends and our family members, and we ask them for referrals. So let's say that you're at a party, and you're at a party. <laughs> at Creative Commons, awesome. Uh, so you're there and you're surrounded by your friends and you're having a few drinks and everything's going great and all of a sudden you kind of remember, right, yeah, God, dentist, I keep forgetting to do this, I gotta ask somebody about a dentist. So when the moment is right, you stop and you say, hey man, who's your dentist? <laughs> and you know, your friend will reply and you maybe get some additional <laughs> testimonies. But unfortunately, after a party, you often wake up the next morning, you kind of forget what has happened. So instead, you go to the Google, because this is also what we do. And you type in Chicago dentist. And uh, this is what comes up. So it's kind of hard to know, like, what do you really care about with a dentist? You kind of have some ideas in mind. But right now, you're just looking for proximity. So you kind of type in this address, and you look around, and you see, OK, these people look fine. They're not too far away from me. So you click on that, and you go through to their website. And this is what you get. So let's pause, this is the home page, let's pause for just a moment and read together the web copy for Strobel Dentistry. Our downtown Chicago dental practice prides itself on having spanned three generations. Dr. Greg Sr. opened Strobel Dentistry in this same location in 1932 based on a deep personal belief in the importance of each patient's oral care, please contact us, etc. So what have we learned from the past 30 seconds of our lives that we will never get back? We're dentists. We have beliefs. We have an office and a phone number and email. So when they sat down to plan this website, what was their primary objective? What was the message? What was the content that they were worrying to con wanting to convey? What was their objective? Okay, so that was not compelling to you. You go back, you click back again, and you kind of glance, and you're like, okay, well, big smile dental. Let's take a look. That sounds promising, casual, friendly. So you go onto big smile dental's page. And once your eyes stop burning from the design, <laughs> you go and you kind of start to glimpse around, and you, look, you land on that big chunk of copy right there. If you're looking for a dentist in Chicago offering the best quality dental care at an affordable price, you came to the right place. And then you kind of start glancing through smile makeover, porcelain veneers, Invisalign, invisible braces, whiter teeth, etc. And you're kind of glancing through and, you know, you're like, well, yeah, maybe these people are kind of more telling me the story of what it is that they can do, right? So what's happening here is that with this copy, they're beginning to sort of reflect back to their target customers or patients the things that are important to those folks. So these are the things that are, are being highlighted and sort of the to voice and tone that's being set. And so in other words, this is more the message that you're getting. The design might suck, but the copy is at least something that you're interested in and not telling about Dr. Greg Sr. and their commitment to your oral health. So what happens here? When we sit down to create our content about our products, about our services, uh, even support content, search results, all of these things, these are the things that we typically want to talk about. Just like a dentist, we want to talk about what we do. Cleanings, root canals, oral cancer screening. And you know, I'm sorry, but when this guy is thinking about choosing a dentist, what he is not saying to himself is, I really need to find a dentist who's going to be sure to do that oral care screening for me. This is not what's on his mind. What's on his mind is that he wants to feel safe.